Hey, everybody. Hi, guys. Well, it's almost fall in Salt Lake City. And it's also almost, thank God I'm Atheist, the podcast. Almost. <laughs> I'm Frank. <laughs> and I'm Dan. Coming up on today's episode, well, Dan's back from Burning Man, so welcome did, back, Dan. You guys missed me, I know. Oh. Adam did fi- a great job, but, you know, oh, you, it's just so much more fun with me. <laughs> I find it much more fun when I'm on the show. Well, that's good. At least at least there's Dan. <laughs> at least there's Dan. At least there's Dan. <laughs> and at least he's back, I guess. <laughs> well, you had like a crazy time. You like I, you, this was your first like like you've been to Burning Man, but this was like your inaugural burner year, right? Because you guys just bought an RV. Because we bought an RV. <laughs> <laughs> to take out the Burning Man. Oh my gosh! Yeah, we we went in on an RV with some other friends, and we some uh, other burners, some other burners. And Although, frankly, none of us really <laughs> you would you wouldn't look at any of us and go, "Oh, burner." No, you know what I mean. But like, it's it's what's in your heart. It's, it's, what's, it's, it's what's in your soul. It's, it's what's in your bowels. Your, your your soul has been marked. <laughs> That's true. It, it's it, it's deep. I've, now. I've, I've got the the Burning Man RFID. Somewhere inside of me. Yeah. You can't you can't get out of the supermarket. Exactly. Paying for that. Beep. I guess. I don't know. That was a weird one. Um all right. Yeah. Well we so got, we got go. we got a good show coming up. Yeah, lots of good stuff. Yeah. So I'll start I'll start. You'll start? Yeah, if you want me to. Sure, yeah. I got a thing. Um this was sent in by a couple of listeners. Uh hmm. okay. it's it's a new website. It's oh, it's up and okay. running. Yeah. And ready to go. All of you. It's not for us. Now, I, I'll start oh, wait, by wait, saying it's not okay. for us. Not for us who? What group? Uh, atheists. Oh. Okay. <laughs> but, okay sure. It, it's not for you guys listening. But right. tell all of your Christian believer friends oh. about ChristianSwingers.com. Oh. <laughs> wait, what? Oh. What? It's exactly what you think it is. It's a dating site for Christian couples to meet other Christian couples. Oh, that's nice. For, for it's good, hard to meet. For good, faithful, other... uh, n- swinging, extramarital fucking. Oh, good. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Get your fuck on, there's everybody. There's definitely nothing wrong with that. And Christians should be joining in. There's, there's nothing. Why not? There's nothing wrong with it unless Wait. you interpret the Bible to say, Adultery is bad. Well, we know, Dan, that you cannot go to the Bible for any sort of definitive anything about what Christians are supposed Absolutely to be not. or not be. Absolutely not. Because they all come away with it with their own whatever. I'm looking at the site right now, and it's got all of these, like, <laughs> okay, it's like its main picture has two blurred out faces. <laughs> I, okay, what I love about it most is the frumpy Christian garb. Yeah, they're still and, in there. And the, the blurred out faces. Out. It's amazing. And like red hair. It's Did a, I see red hair? No, it's like a sort of blonde guy and a maybe brunette woman. Oh, oh the red must be... Where's the red coming from? I don't know. Anyways. Her face? Oh, but the, he's wearing like a <laughs> short sleeve, <laughs> white, button down dress shirt. Right, right. You know what I think? <laughs> here's what I think. I think I'm lying. I think this is for people. Like, honestly, if if you're an atheist and you're a swingers, yeah. fucking go on and get you some Christian ass. Yeah, no kidding. Ooh. Right? Yeah, screw around with them a little yeah. bit. Yeah. And then, and then at the end, be like, Satan thanks you. Ha <laughs> ha I don't know. Christians are entitled to some swinging, just like everybody else, Dan. Absolutely, absolutely. So and then there's these, and then there are these sort of darkened oh, no. photos. <gasps> and look at uh, this one uh, right here. Oh, oh what? like it says private, but then it's like. But you can make it make it out. Yeah, you can cut. You can see. Hook up with Christian swingers in your area. Yeah. Did you put in our zip code? I uh, no, I didn't. I didn't get have, that man. far. You, did you, uh, Why? I don't want to see. You should sign up. <laughs> I should. I'll sign. I'll sign. Uh, other well, sign up the podcast yeah exactly sign up <laughs> we'll see we'll see gay christian podcasting couple in search oh, of that's cute do you think it's there i mean they're swingers look they must be okay with I, I, okay certain, so here's the thing certain you know how like there's always a drop down for i'm a, a male looking for a female well yeah. you think this would just be and the default here is i am a couple looking for a couple but then in the drop down it it's got male, female, transsexual, cross gender, couple, group, more than two, gay couple, lesbian couple. No way. 
Good job on them. Yeah. What are they doing? So what, the first drop down, though, I'm A. I am A. And, and you can oh, be any of those and things. Be, and be looking for. And we are looking for. You could be a gay couple looking for a lesbian couple. And I think you should be. <laughs> no. If you're not gay looking for a lesbian, then you're not as exploratory as I thought maybe you should be. No. Yeah. So and also Christian, apparently. The, the first... Wow, the, this is... They, is this a for real site? It's a for real site. It's there. And because I have to fact, tell you that photo, there was nothing sexy about the photo. No. This, doesn't look, this looks like a... <laughs> to be honest... You think it's a, a hoax? Well, I mean, think about it. It's funny. It smelled like a hoax, but I'll tell you what. I'll tell you who's reporting on it. Who? Christian Post. No way. Christian Post reporting on it. New... Oh. Christian Post... Their headline is new quote... And they put it in quotes. New quote christian swingers dating site offers faithful couples chance to quote hook up <laughs> <laughs> they call it an oxymoronic website uh, they were oh, they must have been moronic. they were very proud of that little their that little turn of phrase the <laughs> the oxymoronic website brazenly declares that it was quote designed to cater to the needs of those like you colon devout christian couples who still want to have an active love life and share it with another in good faith hmm yeah yeah there were some things all right <laughs> Uh, that one kind of blows my mind. Yeah, I, I, yeah, it's it's cute. I don't know, you know, it's adorable go. is what it is. It's adorable. <laughs> and strangely, you'll find this odd. The uh, yeah. the Christian Post article has found uh, people objecting to this site. What? I know. No, no. Impossible, right? Christians would surely think this is a great idea. B- Louis Nielsen. Uh, no, so oh, I beg your pardon, Louise. Nielsen, oh, yeah. Louise Nielsen, mm-hmm. a licensed Christian counselor and mental health professional of At the Crossroads Inc., dismissed mm-hmm. the proposal as not only indecent but unbiblical and dangerous. Unbiblical? <laughs> There's a lot of things that are unbiblical. Yeah. Louise. Yeah, Louise. Mm-hmm. I got some unbiblical for you. Your ya. name, for instance, Louise. Louise. Yeah. Anyway. Hmm. Yeah. She's uh. She's incensed. I just like the whole thing. I'm incensed. I, I oh oh. Here's what I haven't didn't have time to do. I'm gonna yeah. go back and I'm gonna start reading all the comments. Oh okay. Well, didn't Christ get? Here's a comment. Didn't Christ get nailed to a tree so Christians could do this and then say sorry for making God cry? <laughs> okay. All right. Somebody was being naughty. They were being naughty. Anyway. Well, all right. What do you got? Well, uh, something else that hit the internet mm. um, this uh, this last week. Um, I, I don't know if you are you were you are you aware, Dan, that it is Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah. I I am aware of that. That it, that it has that uh, yeah that Rosh Hashanah has happened. I guess or is happening. It's ha- actually it's happening. Is is that one of the things that they do at like sundown or something? Rosh Hashanah is Jewish New Year, right? Oh, Happy New Year, Happy New Year, or whatever Jews? whatever the Jews say. They say a thing. There's a phrase, something Tova. To- like shuna- but- I think tova. it's Tura Lura Lura. <laughs> I'm not sure. I, my my my, my Hebrew is <laughs> rusty. <laughs> I don't know. Indeed. Uh, so, anyways, yeah, it's uh, it's it's Rosh Hashanah, Jewish New Year, and that means that um, people in, in, in are wishing each other a blessed Rosh Hashanah. If you were to, you know, say it in English, okay. I mean, they don't really, right? If you're if you're Jewish, apparently you say the the thing, and we're not. We don't have that at our at our fingertips, right? But what happened was on the um, Iranian president's uh, Twitter feed, on his Twitter account, not yeah. his feed, but his actual account, he tweeted, "As the sun is about to set here in Tehran, I wish all Jews, especially Iranian Jews, a blessed Rosh Hashanah." And it included a picture of a um, Jewish older Jewish man praying at a wall, not the praying wall, but at wow. a wall. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, thanks. Yeah. 
<laughs> that's uh, because let's let's there's, back there's up some political a implications bit. to this. His predecessor, you will recall, yeah. um, uh, what was his name? Uh, I should have this at my fingertips, but I don't. The um, uh, Iranian Ahmadinejad. Ahmadinejad, yeah. He um, he was a Holocaust denier, right? Like he was right. not, He but was not that one doesn't who mean... went around being nice kind to Jews. to Jews, right? Well. You can deny the Holocaust and still believe in the existence Ro- of in, Jews in Rosh Hashanah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, he wasn't denying Judaism. Judaism. <laughs> he was just denying Jewish or uh, yeah, the, the Holocaust. Right. Anywho, that's that, that's some that's some pretty nuanced yeah. thinking on his part. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, I don't know that he ever actually <laughs> wished anybody a. Uh, Happy Rosh Hashanah. Turns out that he probably also actually said some good tidings. Did you know that that Iran has the largest Jewish community in the Middle East outside of Israel? In Iran? Iran! What the hell? Oh my God. 10,000 strong. Oh, you know what? The sun is going down right now as we we record on, on a Thursday. We should probably get our shofar out and play a... A sho- and and sound the shofar. Okay, sure. Yeah, I don't know what a shofar yeah. sounds like. But anyways, it's it's kind of uh, it's kind of remarkable. Also, Iran's Iran's foreign minister just simply said Happy Rosh Hashanah, and um, <laughs> Nancy Pelosi's daughter <laughs> tweeted back, "Thanks. The new year would be even sweeter if you would end Iran's Holocaust denial, sir." Happy Rosh Hashanah. What? And no, wait. Then Nancy Pelosi's daughter is a back. Catholic. He responds <laughs> back. Iran never denied it. The man who was perceived to be denying it is now gone. Happy that, New Year. That's a good point. That's a valid point. Mm-hmm. And represents an interesting uh, part. Like, that. yeah, that's kind of... he's. Of course, he's not saying... He's saying we we've never denied it. He's not saying our we, government hasn't. Right. And he well our and he's and he's president still, who's no longer president did was perceived to have was perceived <laughs> to have. <laughs> but the other thing is that he's not saying oh the the holocaust definitely happened. No. He's just saying no, we've never denied it. Yeah, no, that's true. <laughs> that's true. But he did also say happy Rosh Hashanah. Oh my gosh. By the way, uh, I just typed shofar into Google because okay. I wanted to be sure that that's what, I, what it was that I was thinking of. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you're shopping on Google Shopping for a shofar, you can run the gamut between $16 mm. and $179. That's it? I'm sure you could find more expensive ones. I, I would, doubt you I could find. Hope. I doubt you could find a less expensive shofar than $16, though. Yeah. That is a cheap shofar. Yeah. Oh, I got one that's 300. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. Hmm. Well, there it's you really go. long and twisty. Huh. Well, that's, that's what you want. That's what you want. You want the long, you twisty not, ones. If it's not long and twisty, <laughs> what are you doing? You've wasted your money. It's, it's in my opinion. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, it's it's I Yemenite. Guess if you're only spending $16. You can't be choosers. It could beggars. be straightish and non <laughs> and spin I, spindly and I think the cheap ones slightly spirally. The cheap ones are just yeah, they're they're just curved up. They're short. I think mm. the cheap ones are just short little ram horns. Oh, I've seen those. That yeah. are just curved up. Yeah, I have seen those. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Apparently, you you blow into a a a piece of a a ram's anatomy when really? it's when it's when it's Rosh Hashanah. Well, there you go. So that's lovely. Everybody that's get lovely, Dan. everybody get your lips on on animal anatomy i don't think that's good advice <laughs> you don't oh okay. not when it's so <laughs> when it's when, generalized when i've left it uh, maybe little... if you were more specific <laughs> okay and made sure that said animal wasn't alive <laughs> at least <laughs> maybe got a little more geographical about what part of the anatomy better okay better All yeah right. <laughs> okay i'm gonna move on we're uh in Texas now. 
Oh, you remember Texas? You and I have been to Texas. Yeah, I remember Texas. We spent several days in Texas. We yeah, spent, well, you like, have to. We spent the better part if, of a week in Texas. If you're in your car yeah. and you hit the border of Texas mm. with any intention of leaving it soon, mm-hmm. you've, unless you're turning around, you've made a mistake. <laughs> it's, you're going to be there for a while. It's a big state. It's a big state. All right. So in Texas, in that big state, uh, there has been a small outbreak of measles. They don't do anything small in Texas, Dan. <laughs> Everything's bigger That's in something Texas. something that we learned. Well, any kind of outbreak of measles in this day and age <laughs> is pretty big. Yeah, that's very true. Because why the hell is there an outbreak? Why, One or two why cases. Would you even? Yeah. Well, Get here's why. Here's point. why. Uh, a, it has been linked now back to a church. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Because... Uh, it's a fun little game that a lot of like evangelicals and I don't know why this is religious. I don't know how this got tied into religion at all. What? The anti-vaccination movement. Oh yeah. I don't know how that got tied into religion, but there it is. And, uh, and this little church, um, was, uh, was, was basically saying, you know, that prayer works just as good as vaccination and there's no fake risk of autism. Oh, right. Which vaccinations definitely have a fake risk of autism. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> For those listeners who don't know, uh, there was a study in the UK that was that was published that, that showed a correlation between the MMR vaccine and autism, which was later completely and utterly discredited. And many, many other studies that have been conducted since have shown no such correlation. But Uh that has not stopped anyone from continuing to, uh, well, not, it's, it's stopped plenty of people. It stopped a number. It stopped plenty of people, but it has not stopped any of these such folk from changing their mind about vaccinations. Right. As a matter of fact, so I had a conversation with my sister-in-law about Mm -hmm. vaccination. They just had their fourth child. Oh, okay. And uh, we had a conversation about it, and she was like, oh, I just don't know that I have a good feeling about it. And oh, I was like, God. well, it doesn't matter what your feeling is. There's data. You yeah. can just go with the data. Yeah. She was like, mm, yeah, but I just don't know. And I'm like, yeah, but you're endangering your child and other children around you in your community. Yeah, no kidding. And she was like, mm, yeah. Da, 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 da. Anyway, turns out they're going to, to immunize. Good. Yeah. After, and, and, I, and I very gently and... It was very gentle. I sent in an email to them with a blog post that I found that had links to some very good uh, studies and stuff. Yeah. And I said, "And I said, this is a blog post. It's not to be taken uh, as as fact, right. but it links to some good things and it makes a cogent argument. So maybe read it and include it in your processing you're, as you're thinking about <laughs> it. Well, how diplomatic of you, Dan. It's family. You yeah. have to be diplomatic. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, so they're getting their child immunized, which these people were not doing. These people and now did they're not the center do. of an outbreak. Um, well, I mean, it's not a huge outbreak, but it's a hu- it's huge for a disease that probably shouldn't even exist anymore. Right. Well, uh, in particular, in this country, yeah, and a lot of other countries, yeah, that have people have access to yeah. this is this is this happened at Eagle Mountain, <clears throat> excuse me, International Church. I doubt that they're really international. I doubt there's a mountain. <laughs> it's about 50 miles northwest of Dallas. They've got some Definitely. hills. Yeah, there might be. It's, there might it be should be hill. Eagle Bump. We'll call it Eagle <laughs> Bump Interna- non-international church. Eagle <laughs> Bump local church Yeah, okay. is what we'll that call works. it. Okay. Um, and they, uh, they're now recognizing that they're the epicenter of this out- outbreak. Apparently, they, they're claiming that a visitor came. Uh, an angelic visitor, an an infected visitor. Oh, oh, uh-oh. came and okay. uh, and uh, the congregation was exposed, and uh, then a whole bunch of people got it. Uh, well, that explains what happened with their prayers, right? Something made its way. Th- if that visitor, Satan, if that person <laughs> who was infected with the measles hadn't, you know, come to their to their to their congregation then their prayers would have worked. So you're saying that prayers are every bit as effective 
at preventing measles, provided you don't get exposed to measles. That's exactly what I said. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, no, it's true. It makes total also, sense, right? Also, grape nuts are great for preventing measles as I've long as you're too. as long as you're not exposed to yeah. the to the virus. Yeah. So anyway, that's uh, no that's... grape nuts in, or no measles at my house. And do you eat grape nuts? Well, I don't, but Brent does. See, Brent's yeah. preventing it for both of you. Yeah, it's... plenty <laughs> of, of grape nut grape nuts consumption. Yeah, it's so funny because a, a lot of parents, and I've actually heard this with the uh, with the immunization thing. I've heard parents say, "Well, every all the other kids are immunized, so my kids <laughs> won't get it." Because nobody else gets it. And what that doesn't take into account is that there's a small percentage of people for whom immunization doesn't work. Mm. And, it re- and the concept of immun- immunization relies on the whole community to be mm-hmm. immunized to make sure that those people for whom it didn't work remain safe. Right. Because even though measles, you know, measles isn't often lethal, mm. it can be. Mm-hmm. It's a bad disease. Yeah. So there you go. Hmm. And also, this is not a wealthy part of our country, which means that a lot of these people are being treated on the government dime. (sighs) I'm paying for their measles. I don't want to pay for your measles, but I will pay for your immunization. I'm happy to help pay for your immunization. Cost less. Well, there you go. Yeah. All right. Um, Have you heard of um, the LDS Church? The and? Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints is yeah, that the that, church you're, yeah, you're I talking think, I about? Think that's what it stands for. I think they have one of those here I, I, in Salt Lake City. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've seen one. Yeah, yeah. There's on, a big one right down the street on every goddamn corner. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, apparently they are releasing a new uncompromising volume of the Joseph Smith Papers. Have you heard of the Joseph Smith Papers? It's a series of historical sort of. They, they they collect up Joseph Smith's papers and they publish them. <laughs> wow. It's uh-huh. a great description of what they are, <laughs> Frank. <laughs> anyway, yes. Yeah, so yeah. so the so the church themselves is releasing it. When you say uncompromising, are you saying that they're actually not editing them and they're just letting them they all go? They're actually letting a lot of dirt in fly. Uh-huh. Ooh, yeah. That's exciting. Um so um so yeah so it's um the uh the the, the 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 there was a news conference this last Wednesday uh-huh. um which I don't think means yesterday I think it means a week ago No 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 it means it means yesterday Okay um so on the 4th breaking news breaking news <laughs> um they had a news conference at the church history library in downtown okay. Salt Lake City Sure and to uh to announce the release of Documents, Volume 1, July 1828 to June 1831. Wow. And uh, it covers... Does it have moon men? Um, I don't know. When did that, when did that no come idea. out? I don't know. Um, but it covers Mormonism's early days, yeah. um, including when Smith published um, the, the, the Book of Mormon yeah. and originally organized the church, which happened in 1830. Sure. Um, so it includes revelations, quote unquote, uh, minutes of meetings, letters he wrote, sermons he gave, legal and business documents, and even licenses and receipts, all arranged in chronological and so mortifyingly boring order. Right. From the sound of it. Right. Nobody's going to dig into this unless you are like a historian. Right. But a lot of people, it will be on a lot of Mormon's shelves. Yes, nonetheless. Indeed. But, you know. But anyways, um, but there is there's a real attempt with this um, with this release of, of of documents to just let it all fly, just put it out there, yeah, huh? Because and and this is of course because they have started to recognize that their members are discovering this stuff right it's all on the it, web it's all and online. it looks like the church is being all like oh well, we don't want you to yeah we're hiding this uh yeah. and now they're like no no Which, we're not we published it in this incredibly <laughs> boring dense journal dense unedited journal. right right yeah. what's funny is that in doing so so yes the church now avoids the accusation that they're hiding this stuff right what the church now has to deal with though is the fact that there's crazy in them Nar Hills. Oh yeah. There's like a whole bunch of shit that will 
caused Mormon's eyes to open wide. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure what, because there's a bunch of stuff. I mean, I, like like you say, we don't know. We haven't been able to look at it and see right. which documents are in it. But right. There's a, but, but I mean, it sounds like they. I mean, sounds, just the the list that, they, that this says that's in it. Yeah. My goodness. Like anything that letters and receipts. Yeah. Well, receipts. Oh, great. <laughs> Oh, oh look! He, pound, he he paid for f- four pounds worth of barley. Mm, bought an Isaac Mizrahi set at Target. <laughs> <laughs> Bloop! <laughs> Bloop! Will this be cash or credit, sir? Yeah, I don't. I don't think that's what it's like. <laughs> we could see Joseph Smith's handwriting. Right? Yeah, uh, apparently it has the oldest um, letter. Known to be written in his hand, I think mm. I remember it saying. Dear um, Grandma, camp is fun. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone here is making fun of me, though, oh, until yeah. I figured out that I could tell them what's what's happening underneath the ground by looking into a hat. He was good at that. Yeah, he was. Yeah. He really shined when it came to looking into hats. Yeah. But anyways, I think that's interesting. I do, too. It's, it, it's going to warrant our attention going forward. Yeah. If anybody has the patience to look through the whole thing and find the interesting parts, go ahead and do it and yeah. then write to us. How, how, about, about, how about we buy one for your mom? Yeah. Would she I'll, still... Would she... She wouldn't care. I'd rather buy one for my uh, father-in-law and then look through it while I'm over at his house. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then be like, hey, David. And, or Talk not, about a gift that would confuse the hell out of them. Right, right, right. And then <laughs> I'll just leave it randomly open to certain pages every time I leave. Have a little bookmark. Yeah. Just I, No, not even that. Just so, like... Just, just leave it open. Don't say anything. Don't expect them to actually read it. But mm. maybe... Mm-hmm. Maybe they look at it. Mm-hmm. Doubtful. Doubtful. Well, and it's not like, like my parents. It's not like it would shake their faith, even if they did. Yeah. Even if they read something that was like crazy, like there are men on the moon who are dressed like Amish people, mm-hmm. they would just be like, "Oh, he didn't know things back then." <laughs> they would find a way to justify <laughs> Everybody it. Everybody thought that. Everybody thought that. They, back. Nobody had been to the moon. <laughs> That's it. Was what people thought. Yeah. They thought it was made of cheese. His was a better theory than that. Yeah, it's not made of cheese, and it has people <laughs> dressed <laughs> like Amish. Anyway, mm. uh, so I'm the in the UK, that's the UK, for those mm-hmm. of you who don't know how to pronounce UK. Okay. Or also known as the United Kingdom. Ah, uh, yes. Where they house England. That's where they keep England <laughs> uh, and other things. Sure. Um, there's a, so, so they have the, the equivalent to the, to our Girl Scouts, uh, oh. which they call the Girl Guides. What do they guide? Uh, each other toward other girls. I don't know. It's just the Girl Guides. Sounds interesting. So it's, okay. it's getting kind of hot. Do they sell cookies like the Girl Scouts do? Do you know? I'm unaware biscuits? of Do they sell that? biscuits? <laughs> biscuits. Can you, girl girl would, Guide Biscuits. Would you like to buy a tin of biscuits? <laughs> No, we haven't made them. The Girl Guide biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, they uh, th- uh, they're adorable, and they've changed their Girl Guide promise. Okay, the official Girl Guide promise uh, used to include the phrase uh, that they promise quote to love my God. Okay. It What's doesn't it? anymore. Really? They've they've taken God out. Well, they've realized that a lot of their girl guides don't probably right. love their God. Right. Or even have a God to love. Yeah. So wow. now the new promise reads, I promise that I will do my best to be true to myself and develop my beliefs. Interesting. Yeah. Develop my beliefs. And then it still says, to serve the queen and my community. It used to be queen in my country. Now it's queen in my community. Interesting. And to help other people, to help other people and to keep the brownie guide law or the girl guide law. Really? Isn't that interesting? Oh, so they have brownies too? I guess so. Huh. It would seem so. Interesting. Um. Well, that's, that's, uh. That's cool. That's a nice development. It's a thing. Yeah, I wrote to this the. Says a lot about the UK. I wrote to the uh, the United States uh, Girl Scouts 
to asking if they uh if they're planning on making similar changes and yeah. ha- they've not gotten back to me yet. Well, what is their promise? How does it pr- read currently? Do you know? I can look it up. Yeah, I did look it up at one point. I know the Girl Scouts is not it, by any stretch of the imagination. The, the Girl Scouts in the United States is not by any stretch of the imagination anything like the BSA. The Boy as, Scouts of America. Exactly. Correct. As far as like how just like dumb the BSA is. And and hateful toward that's the one. Yeah. The uh they don't like the gays and they don't like the atheists. That's exactly it. The Girl yeah. Scout promise. On my honor, I will try to serve God and my country okay. to help other to help people at all times Still there. and to live by the Girl Scout law. My at honor. least according to their yeah, according to their website, and that's why I wrote to ask if they had plans to make any changes okay. similar. Interesting. Okay. Uh, but at the time of recording, they have not gotten back to me. Well, all right. They so, had their chance. They did. I felt like I was being so um, reporterly, yeah, so journalistic. <laughs> they did not immediately. They did reply. not immediately respond. Uh huh. Okay. Well, all right. There I, probably, I probably wrote to the wrong address. Is what yeah. I didn't write to like the press address. I should have mm-hmm. found that, but I got too lazy, so I just went to their contact us thing. Yeah, and that's going to take a few days. Yeah. No. Yeah. Anyway. All right. Um. So people outside of Salt Lake City. You're not going to know what KSL is. We've talked about it before. It's a TV station. It's our TV. It's one of our, it's our NBC affiliate. Right. It's owned by the LDS Church. Indirectly. Indirectly, but it's owned let's by what? It. Bonneville Communications. Bonneville Communications, which is owned, which by is the... probably also you know, right, right, which is kind of a Shineheart wig company, sort of, right, exactly, thing, right? exactly. It's a conglomerate of a conglomerate of yeah. a of a but let's division. Face it, we know whatever. who owns it. We know it's who owned, owns KSL. It's owned by the church. It's owned by the LDS Church. Correct. Which is why, which is why they've, shows like they've not Saturday, run Saturday Night Live, Live doesn't get run on it. The what's the the gay one? What is that, that gay was, one? That was that they decided been canceled. Run. Oh, oh, the so new the, normal. The new normal. They didn't run that. Uh, they didn't run that. They didn't run. Uh, they haven't. Uh, they decided not to run Hannibal, just oh, because right. it was violent. Which is actually, hey, if that's the stand you're taking, okay. Yeah, I can. Get, I, I guess I can understand. You that. know, I kind of get the not wanting to show violence on on um, you know freely uh, accessed television. Sure. Um, but um, as far as you don't like the fact that there's a gay couple on a show or something of the sort. I think they just don't like the fact that there's gay anything yeah. ever, anywhere. And Saturday Night Live. Although Saturday Night Live's coming back. Oh, that's right. They're they gonna... finally announced that they're they're going to be bringing Saturday Night Live back <laughs> to KSL. Anyways, um, the next show that is being uh, moved around, let's say, oh. by KSL. Not opted to, out of completely? To, not completely opted out of, but okay. that's being put to uh <laughs> two uh, uh what was it uh 105 a.m <laughs> <laughs> monday through friday days of our lives oh my god <laughs> a daytime soap <laughs> in the nighttime yeah <laughs> yeah uh apparently a lot according to a lot of observers yeah. of ksl uh who would like to um come up with theories because ksl will not go on the record as to like why they're moving it they it, will not say why it, it's ju- it just got moved it got it just got moved we're not going to comment on it we just moved it um they uh there's a there's a a, a gay storyline a gay there's two gay guys what uh, oh a my couple gosh. uh will and sunny <sighs> Um, and uh, apparently, I mean, it's been going on and for a number have, of months. And both Will and Sonny have gay evil twins. <laughs> and have both come back from the dead. <laughs> um, yeah. Wow. Uh, so, <laughs> now, no. <laughs> so, it's just like, so dumb. It's really, really, really dumb. And a lot of people, there are those also, the, the Salt Lake Tribune article that I found uh, was actually saying that they're not convinced that the writer of this article is not convinced that it is actually the gay issue because KSL does show Dr. Phil, which is also, they have the, also is Dr. Phil like gay friendly. Gay, yeah. He's okay. been really gay friendly. Okay. Uh, th- since basically, I mean, I don't, I don't, know, I don't know that you can de- describe Dr. Phil as anything friendly. <laughs> he just is never friendly. Well, but he, 
but you know, I, I, he, sure. he's equally mean to gays and and straight people. Yeah, yeah you sure. need to get your act together. Yeah, your problem is that you you got a loving man over here, and you are stepping out with other men. Yeah, or whatever. Yeah, that, I, I could hear Doctor Phil saying that. Sure, absolutely, absolutely. 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 Did, I I uh, tried to sound like also... I had a mustache when I did that impression. <laughs> I, I don't really. I've ne- I've, I've like seen Doctor Phil four times ever, but you need a little bit more Southern. In yeah, that. uh, and, and that would have been a little bit more Doctor Phil. Uh, that's also the show that they're going to uh, put into the time slot. They're not canceling the other time that they're showing Doctor Phil. They're just also <laughs> now showing Doctor Phil again. You get two times the Doctor Phil. That's probably what their ad's going to say. Twice the Doctor Phil. It's the same one. It's the same. It's the same episode, mm-hmm. but you get it twice. Yeah. Oh my Unless god. Unless it's like some best of Doctor Phil, but I highly doubt that. <laughs> the best of. So it's an, so it just seems like it's really a, a really rash decision on their part. <laughs> it was not part of some grand scheme. And when you see that kind of thing at KSL, where they just like cancel something and just put something stupid on in its place, you know that it's that it's it. This is a directive. Yeah. You just have. It's clear that like oh no somebody I'll, I'll way tell you. high up in the LDS church got on the phone and was like, "What are you doing?" Here's what happened: somebody's niece, somebody's little little grandbaby, mm. cu- saw a gay thing and was like, "Dad, mommy, what are they doing?" And suddenly it was like calling into grand grandpa general authority. I can't believe they're showing this stuff on KSL. And mm-hmm. Grandpa General Authority is like, yep, we're killing it. <laughs> Picking up the red phone straight over. That's right. <laughs> Cut the feed right now. Um, yeah, it's kind of crazy. Oh, my God. So well, it's there just you fun. Go. And, uh, but what I love is that also this is classic. All these Salt Mormon house, all these housewives are going to have to set their, uh, their, their DVRs now. Yeah. But what a handsome couple. To get their stories. What a handsome couple. Well, yeah, they yeah. better be. They're on a soap. Yeah. You have to be you don't have yeah. to be able to act for shit, but you have to be good looking. You have to, you have to look good. Also very young. Mm. Oh yeah. They're like eighteen and nineteen. And I'll bet you they uh I'll bet you they, they find excuses to get their shirts off all the time. Well, they're gay. Well, that's true. You don't need an excuse when you're gay. Yeah. Take it that's off. That's just what gay men do. <laughs> Hello. Everybody says so, that, especially the writer, the writers at Days of Our Lives. <laughs> They're gonna be way on top of that one. Says the guy in the button down that's all prim and proper. Well, whatever. Yeah. All right. Well, Facebook dot com slash TGI Atheist. I've heard of that. I've is, heard of Facebook. Is a, is a wonderful way for you to go and uh, join the conversation yeah. if you'd like. Although this week I wasn't very present for it because I was away in the yeah. desert and stuff. It'll it'll but it'll it, tend but to it itself. happens on you guys post stuff and it's yeah. great so yeah. you guys can interact and other people with... can see it absolutely yeah it's not just for you to do Dan no no it's and and good thank God for that because I'm shitty at the Facebook yeah and I, I won't do it you just won't I go refuse there. I refuse <laughs> anyway uh, you can also write to us at podcast at thank God I'm atheist dot com or you could leave us a voicemail by calling four two four six 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 eight Four four two. Mm. We're gonna take a quick break. Yeah, break it um, up. We're gonna take a patty break. <laughs> it's our. It's it's a patty break. <laughs> this one's a disappointing one. Yeah, he just sounds like he's thrashing around in this one. This is Mary, who says my Sunday school class was asked to give transportation for a man from a nursing home to Sunday services because quote his elderly father could not drive anymore. I drove him 20-plus times over several months. I found out two weeks ago he's dying of AIDS. I think those driving him should have been told his diagnosis in a private way. A few people in church knew. I did not. I feel deceived. What if we had had an accident? Did someone have a moral obligation to tell the drivers the truth? I haven't been back to church since I found out. I'm going somewhere else until I sort this out. You know... I must confess, I, I I don't know all the ramifications of infection with AIDS. I used to think it was transmitted by saliva and other things. Now they say it may be sexual contact. So uh, what uh, you want to say if you're driving an elderly man who's got AIDS, don't have sex with him. But uh, that's a little too simplistic. I don't necessarily think you didn't get AIDS. So 
unless there's a cut or some bodily fluid transmission, mm -hmm. I, I think you're not going to catch it, but it's a horrible thing. And yeah. I, I, I don't know what to say there. There are laws now, I think the homosexual community has put these draconian laws on the books that prohibit people from discussing this particular affliction. You can tell somebody they've got a heart attack, you can tell them they've got high blood pressure, but you can't tell anybody they've got AIDS. Um, so I don't know, you see, you didn't catch anything, so keep going to church and praise the Lord. You got any thoughts on that? Well, you know, I. I think you were doing a good thing by transporting this man. I have yeah. known many people with AIDS and have never felt fearful, mm -hmm. you know, of a scenario like this. I guess I think even if you'd had a car accident. You know I what mean, they do in uh, San Francisco, some of the gay community, they, they want to get people. So if they've got the stuff, they'll have a ring, you shake hands, and the ring's got a little thing where you cut your finger. Really? Yeah, really. I mean, it's that kind of vicious stuff, which would be the equivalent of murder. Yeah. But um, anyhow, I'd, I'd, for that one, go for back to one, your church. Is involved. Yeah, I go think back to your church. Yeah. You're fine. Okay. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> well, it, it wasn't going terrible <laughs> for him. It, it was. He was. It, he was waffling a little bit. Like we do know how how AIDS is transmitted now. Yeah. So like he was. He wasn't quite there. He was like, yeah, I think that they say now that you can do the this and the that. But uh, he, but he was okay. He was on the right track. He was okay. And then, <laughs> and then in the last five seconds, he decides to throw out the schoolyard like rumor like, thing. I, I, it, it, yeah, I haven't even heard stuff like that since the late 80s. Right, exactly. I, 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 but wait, now wait, Frank. Uh, Be fair. You gay he's guys. He's in his late 80s. <laughs> you gay guys are vicious and you do try to give AIDS to people, don't you? <laughs> Clearly. Don't you guys do that? Isn't well, that a clearly, thing? Yeah. That you yeah, do? Yeah. Well, yeah, that's... With the rings and whatnot? With yeah. the... I mean... It would help if I had AIDS. Have, have if any... I was going to be spreading AIDS, it would help if I had Just it get it on the place. ring. That's all you have to do. You right. don't have to have it yourself. Just somehow get it on the ring. And then... Because you gay guys do love to accessorize. Oh, <laughs> with sharp objects. With, with, with sharp virus-laden objects. But I mean, it's the exact same... I mean, I heard this in the form of um, um, the, 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 the change collector tray mm. on vending machines. There would be like a razor blade infected with AIDS in there. Oh, yeah. Um, I heard oh, that's... For, you it's know, so like, dumb. There were a ton of them. There was, there was this whole theme of like metal objects that would cut you mm. and then you would get AIDS. You get AIDS. And it was always like in some little hidden place somewhere. I had never heard the, the, the ring one. Change before. thing. I've never heard the change thing. Okay. Yeah. It's like, I your that change one. is AIDS. That's your change. Yeah. Here you go. You got change for a dollar? I got AIDS for a dollar. Um, You bought a candy bar, 50 cents. You put a dollar in, you get two quarters and some AIDS. And AIDS. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, it's so dumb. He, it's just so uh, dumb. And here's the deal. We uh I was about to watch it right before we started recording uh, the Anderson Cooper takedown of yeah. this whole clip. Um and so there is one we out there. We haven't listened we haven't to it. We haven't watched it. Go ahead and find um, it if you want to. But what's interesting is this caused a lot of hubbub and uh the 700 club had the clip taken down from YouTube. Yeah, they would. They, Which doesn't always we had, happen. We had to dig to find it because yeah. I saw it and then then we tried to find it again and it was just missing. So mm -hmm. they were try they're trying to hide it, but you can't hide once it's been on the internet. It's on the web. Yeah, it's on. It it, just because it was pulled down from YouTube, you yeah. can't stop the shit the spread of that. Anderson Cooper has it for Christ's sake. Yeah, it's on the 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 Cooper Show. Yeah. Well, we had uh, we had some folks write right into us. We did indeed, and uh, I think we should uh, we should acknowledge them. We had Craig write in. Um, Craig has decided to correct us on something. Craig, we're always right. Craig, so Craig, this is the first. Cor I would like to correct Craig. Get your act together, Craig. <laughs> we're always right, even when we're wrong. <laughs> Clearly, not. Uh, uh, yeah, actually, Craig said that. Uh, Craig points out that we explicitly s asked for people yeah. to write in, and and we want them. We we yes. and we will, we will read them. Yeah. So he was he's, he's writing in reference to the New Mexico case where the photographer refused to photograph a lesbian wedding, and he says that the couple in question did uh, 
they you know we were talking about well like why the fuck wouldn't they just go to a non-homophobic photographer right who was it somebody i recently saw some video where somebody like suggested that you go ahead and that that if you're a christian photographer you go ahead and hate or you go ahead and take their pictures and then on the pic on the proofs for the pictures on the pictures you have embossed the words worthy of death oh my god yeah this was one pastor's solution. That, that, that was a Christian that said that? Oh, yeah. A uh, good Christian. Good good idea. A good Christian that That's said that. That's a good idea. That's nice. Anyway, uh, good so, idea. So, so Craig says um, uh, that, that it wasn't clear that we had all the facts straight. The couple in question did actually go find another photographer, and uh, they did not sue. What they did was file a complaint with the State Anti-Discrimination Board, then when the board found the photographer did indeed violate the state anti-discrimination law, the photographer sued the state seeking an exemption to the anti-discrimination law based on the basis of freedom of re- from religion. All right. Um, yeah, and I, I did a cursory look to just see, verify what he to was To make saying. sure that he was correct in right. his correction. And then I, for, uh, my ADD kicked in and I didn't actually figure out. <laughs> so we don't so, know if he was correct? Yeah. We just read a correction just 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 to read the correction. Mm-hmm. Well, all right. I hope he was right. <laughs> I hope one of, well, one of us was. <laughs> well, <laughs> not necessarily. <laughs> you both could be wrong. That's true. Anyways. Anyway. Well, thank you, Craig. Thanks for We're writing in, Craig. your word. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> thanks, Dan. <laughs> All right. Well, I have a couple corrections. Um, I, more than, more of adding to the to the discussion. Right. These these are not so much corrections. Um, uh, last week in uh, when 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 Dan wasn't here, Adam and I, uh, we spent a while talking about abortion and where mm. the line is drawn and sort of some of our sort of because what the world needs is more feelings. men talking about abortion i think we acknowledged that no i'm just kidding um but it is always strange it is always funny. It, it, it does feel a little weird because but i you know what? I, I, I don't, don't have I... organs that will grow babies right that's true you don't and so but although i will say this i think i think that there is a disingenuous uh feminist i don't know that it's feminists but there's a disingenuous group of people who will say that men don't have any place in this conversation, oh, well, and that's some bullshit. It's the society that we live in. Right. And so, of course, we have to yeah. have an opinion. We all have to – yeah, laws and, – and it affects all of us. Whether yeah. or not we're the ones having the abortion, it's still going to – you know, there's still men involved. There technically has to be at least one man involved for an abortion to be needed. Now. That's, that's true, Dan. Now. Maybe currently. If, currently. Anyway, while we speak, uh, right at the uh, time of this recording, <laughs> there still requires <laughs> pr- pr- procreation. Still requires a man. We have belabored. Yeah, move on. <laughs> Go. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. who was it? Uh, and and an agnostic in the closet is how mm. um, she signs this. Um, right. She says that she's a um, an African American female board certified OBGYN um, and agnostic, but in the closet. Um, and she wanted to add clarify a couple things uh, for us. The limits of current abortion procedures. This is her first point. Uh, are not based on pain receptors, but on viability. Right. Ten to fifteen years ago, it was twenty eight weeks um, or seven months. Now it is twenty four. This means that it, that if uh, an infant is born at 24 weeks with a tremendous amount of intensive care, it will probably survive. It doesn't mean that it won't have a myriad of other uh, or of health problems or handicaps, right. but it will most likely live. Uh, and then uh, she also adds the medication that enhances fetal lung maturity is an injectable steroid. Mm. Uh, and then she lists or she says, uh, uh, gives two uh, possibilities there. Uh, I'm not even going to try to say them. No. Uh, and then uh, the the other point, uh, late-term abortions are usually due to severe fetal uh, anomalies or women that for financial slash social reasons could not get the procedure done sooner. Mm. Uh, as more and more family planning clinics are closed, low-income women have to secure more money for travel and higher procedure cost. Uh, which makes them further along in the pregnancy I see. when they finally secure an appointment. That seems like a valid thing. That makes a lot of sense. I um, also think And that then there's... she says, and, the, and I wanted to get to this, okay. uh, the question I wish 
wished you asked during your podcast Ooh. is who on earth would risk all to have a procedure done in such a horrific clinic if there was an alternative and what is their income level? Yeah. And that that's, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. That's a great question. Um, and I'm, I'm glad you were listening so that you could, you could add that in. Yeah, absolutely. To the, to the, to the... It's a, it, it is a, a difficult conversation, but it's nice to have a doctor participating in it because yeah, that's it, uh, it helps. helpful. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, I'll tell you who's not, who we haven't allowed to participate in our, in uh, who you and Adam didn't bring into your conversation. Mm -hmm. The voices of the little babies. <laughs> what about the thousands, the hundreds of thousands of <laughs> little babies' it's voices true. that have been and silent? Si it's, it's, it's horrifying. I'm sorry. I said babies. I meant zygotes. Yeah. I meant fetuses. And then just moving right along, Wendy from Canada also mm. chimed in on this. Um, she says, I agree with you, Frank, for the most part on your pro-choice views. There needs to be a line, but there is one exception. I believe the mother's life trumps the baby's in late-term abortions. Oh, this yeah. chimes, uh, th that sort of echoes uh, what the doctor um, uh, was saying. Uh, if the mother's life is in danger, uh, like that lady in Ireland, mm. uh, then the abortion should be performed even if it's late-term. And perhaps the baby might need might be able to be saved as well in such circumstances. But even if not, mother's life should be most important as she is already a conscious living human being with relationships with other human beings. That's right. an interesting I think that thing that's to point out. A hundred percent valid. Yep. If her if, if the mother's life is in danger, she can make another kid later or, you know, we don't yeah. we don't need more kids. It's the mother is already there. She's yeah. already a, a, yeah, an absolutely. existing person. Yeah. So. Much more. It's a very valid thought. Absolutely. Um, so, okay. Are we done with abortion? Yes, we Should are. Should we ab abort that conversation and move on? If that's how you want to put it, Dan. <laughs> it's, it's apparently how I did put it. <laughs> um, uh, we got we got a, an update from our, our friend Kelly. Kelly wrote in a few weeks back and uh, said that... Um, she, we now know that it's a she. Oh, good. Uh, she was... I, I picked, see, I picked up on that. Somehow, I picked I'm, up on that. I thought you said it was a man. No, you said it was a man, and I was like, I read it as, a, as though she was a woman. Okay. I don't know why. I, yeah, I, I don't think that I said it was a man. I said that my, if I were to guess, but I wasn't sure for any reason. Anyway, <laughs> she is the president of an organization and uh, that organization has a conference, and that conference always starts with an invocation. Yes. Traditionally. Yes. She wrote in to say that she has now uh, gone over the organization's constitution, yeah. which says that the presiding officer of all conferences shall follow the manual of Robert's Rules of Order Revised, and the order uh, of the proceedings shall be as follows, and then it goes on to say that it includes an invocation. Hmm. So she feels stuck. She's got to have the invocation until yep. until you know. That's an interesting uh, position to... to 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 be in. Yeah, actually. Here's my question, though. But at least she's off the hook. Right, right. It's not her call to make. Yeah, exactly. But here's my question: What is an invocation? How much well, leeway can she find in the word invocation? Because oh, I right. think it's you pretty could, high up there in I the think, definition of the word that it's a that it's a calling on a higher power or higher calling on to a, a deity, a supreme being of some sort. I bet it's in there. Yeah, I bet it's either the first or se second definition. Well, in the and dictionary I bet it's that I'm mostly at, what it talks about in the in the, the, the dictionary that I'm looking at, it says the action of invoking something or someone for assistance or as an authority. Mm, okay. Uh, then it says the summoning of a deity or the supernatural. Summoning. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that conjures a, as, yeah, it's, an image. Yeah, people around a cauldron or whatever. <laughs> uh, or, Do that. Or an Do that, Kelly. An incantation used for this, or in the Christian church, a form of words such as in the name of the Father, intro introducing a prayer sermon, etc. I don't know. I think that there's some wiggle room to make it a more inclusive invocation. Mm. I'm, I'm and I'm not suggesting that I mean this may put Kelly in 
a weird like place if she yeah. pushes this too far. So mm-hmm. I'm not suggesting that that's the case that that Kelly needs to do it. What I'm saying is, if okay. one were to find themselves in a similar situation, as Kelly does, mm-hmm. she might want to explore that a little bit. Yeah, just see, you know how how close to the line can you come and still be okay? And I don't mean just okay in terms of like still be on the windy side of the rules. Right. I mean, she needs to protect her job and everything. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. So, I mean... Well, what was the group again? Was it a medical something or other? A, oh, um, what is it? It is a forensic a science, science. Forensic science. Law enforcement and forensic That's science right. conference. So... I I'm not a lot of wriggle room here. I don't know. I mean, you know, you just... It's like when I, when my father, my other father-in-law from my first wife, asked me to say the blessing at the table. And, you know... Of course, my mother-in-law was like, oh, no. Oh, Calvin, you can't do that. <laughs> and I just said, no, it's all right. And I bowed my head and I just said a very general, you know, thing that wasn't a to, to any God. But uh, it was just like, may we all be thankful for what we what, for what we're about to eat. And may we all. Blah, you blah, left blah. them with such an icky feeling. I hope they felt so. So icky after no, that, Dan. Actually, they didn't. My current in laws would totally hate that, <laughs> which is why they will never, ever, ever call on me to say any prayer. And uh, I'm fine with that. Yeah. Anyway, thanks, Kelly, for that. Yeah. Uh, I got another one from Amanda. Should I just throw that out there real quick? Um, Amanda wrote a whole bunch of things. She's a she's a young writer. She's a poet. Oh. A young poet. She's going into college now. Okay. Uh, she wrote a whole bunch about it. And by the way, oh, and she she suggests that when we have a um, when we have an emailer that we that of indeterminate gender. Oh yeah. She suggests that we use the uh, proposed gender neutral pronoun Z. Z. I hate that. <laughs> Z. It's used mainly by the transgender community, yeah. and I totally understand it, and I totally understand the need for it, and I embrace the concept. Hmm. But to say, oh, look at that person, Z is walking to the store, sounds really, really ridiculous to me. Yeah. I just can't. I, it's, I have trouble. Maybe it's just because it's new uh, and I'm resisting. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. You need to get used to that one. It yeah. just sounds crappy. They couldn't have picked a better one than Z. The problem Z. is it doesn't, It it's not, it, it, we have no experience with it yet. I know. I just, Z. Z. Well, it's the sounds of it that I don't that I object to. It's not the concept. It's he, the sounds. She is it Zim? I think it is like like and Zer. Zer. I don't. I, I there is a whole. Ziz. We can look it all up. <laughs> I also don't. I don't. Z- Ziz's the whole, house is so nice. Yeah, exactly. It, I don't it know. is a little difficult. You're right. I mean, but that's. I mean, if you're adopting something like that, it is going to be hard. Yeah, I don't. Know. I, I I don't think it's a workaround for. For our emails? I, 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 th- I think that that is the kind of pronoun that somebody opts into. <laughs> they announce to everybody in their office. Please refer to me. In, a, in some sort of st- all staff email. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that That is now their preferred uh, oh, pronoun. Everybody would just flip out. Eh, it depends on the setting. I guarantee if you worked at, a, at, a, at the university, <laughs> your whole office would be yeah. like... They'd be bummed because now they have to do it. Right. But they would do it. Yeah, like, oh, but there would be one grumpy they, old professor who would just be like, no, I'm not going to call her. Oh, not the professors. The professors. Oh, yeah. They have tenure. Yeah. They can do whatever <laughs> they, they want. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Zer, Zer or Zem. Okay. Zer or Zer. Well, no, why is there an alternate? Here's the problem. Like, I'm looking it up, and I'm saying, like, the the alternative, t- like, so if it's a male, then we would say, I called him. But according to Wikipedia, if it's a, 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 a the, the uh, well, gender neutral Z, mm-hmm. then it becomes, I called Zer slash Zem. Well, why are there alternates? Should just be Zam. They they need to go with a different right. vowel sound. Right, right. They 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 went with a different consonant at the beginning. Right. So now pick a different vowel. Yeah. One like, that doesn't remind you of one of the gendered. Yeah, exactly. Because it sounds like you're choosing Some... between the gender neutral version yeah. of him or the gender neutral version of her. Zem. Zem. 
Zem is Zem. is the is the is the, oh, is it was the him Zem. version. Oh, it's Zem. Zer or Zem. Oh, okay. <laughs> God, can we, you people get your act together? Out Zaz. there, Zaz. <laughs> I called Zaz, and Zaz and Zaz was totally like. And then everybody thinks you're talking about a person named Zaz. Named Zaz. I don't, I don't get it. It's, it's going to be hard. tough. It's, it's going to be tough. We're we're in a place where we're uh, we're in a moment in history where new gender identity is emerging. And we just don't have the right vocabulary. Or, yeah. yeah, it's fine. Anyway, Amanda also said that she's uh, she's. She, I wanted to address this. She said she's going to, uh, she's going to off to university. She, for whatever reason, she's from Texas. She applied to University of Dallas, which is in fact a private Catholic school. Oh, are they still Catholic? Because a lot of schools are Catholic, but they're not. They're, Catholic. They sound you know? pretty Catholic to me. Really? She says they have the best psychology and uh, English departments around. So she oh, wanted to okay. do that. Um, and they also offered her a $64,000 scholarship. Whoa. Good congratulations. Job. Way to go, That's Amanda. A lot of money. Uh, anyway, um, so she, she got the schedule for orientation week. And there are apparently three public service options available to sign up for all relating in some way to Catholicism. Ugh. One of those options is praying at the local abortion That's clinic. That's not service. That's not service? That's not service. That's not service. You should tell them, Amanda, that this is not service. That's not service. That's praying. Yeah. Not service. That's not service. Service is like uh, You do something. Line. You do you something know? that... Building something. Cleaning up tangibly something. Tangibly helps people. Getting your hands a little dirty. Yeah. That's service. Right. You should, you should bring that up, yeah. Amanda. As yeah. a freshman, <laughs> <laughs> maybe give it some time. Oh well, maybe, maybe maybe use up a little bit of that that uh that scholarship first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Get your free education and then complain. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. I I you know it's one of those things. I you're in you're going to be in an interesting spot for the next little while. She says that if anything goofy happens, she'll she'll email please us. do please, yeah please let us know Absolutely. all the fun that's happening down there. I wish we had known about it when we were on our trip. Yeah, through no Texas. kidding. Uh, that would have been good. Well, there you go. But uh, yeah, it that sounds good. And oh, she had a she had some sweet things to say, and she oh, said she nice. said in some way that we've we've become her older brothers oh that's sweet that is super sweet nah. oh i feel like we got a little sister out there and she better do what we tell her to do do my laundry <laughs> amanda oh, wow okay you know what you're supposed um, to do with a little sister i don't think so oh okay well you've oh. never had a little sibling you don't know mm, okay uh what else you got dan um emails wise anymore uh i don't i don't know that i, I know i know we, we have we, some donors to thank we have a lot of we we got a lot of emails a lot of it was just was it was nice things that they said about us and we and really we are, are grateful totally appreciate that but we, you know we don't have if you have nice read. things to say please we, say we them. do we do you know we like to hear it. we do have some donors um matt was incredibly generous thank you matt. thank you so much matt um helen is now a monthly subscriber well, thank you helen thank you helen uh we really appreciate that and celia also a monthly a new monthly subscriber oh, okay. we need uh we, we we do use these funds we've got a thing that we just bought some tickets for coming up that mm. we'll report back to you it'll on be a kind of a church review it'll be sort Not of really. a, yeah be a church review i think in 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 the vein yeah of it, but it won't be church suffice it to review. say we had to pay to do this church review yeah yeah so said preacher makes a lot of money homeboy makes bank and we're contributing yeah. to it yeah sadly anyway uh so but in order for us to do events like that in order for us to do fun things and get out there and be wacky for you all which uh, we want to do more of uh, we need we 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 certainly can use the help. So if you want to be like these fine people and donate to our program, you can go to thankgodimatheist dot com and click on the donate uh, the the support us yeah button on the right. And then there's side. a lot of options. Lots of options. Yeah, lots of options. All right, cool. Uh, Anything else along those lines? No. Let's okay. uh, let's let's talk about Burning Man. Ooh. Are you excited? Oh my goodness! Now you've been to Burning Man. I have been to Burning Man, so I have so a you, frame of reference. You have a context for it. I uh, I I can understand what you're talking about, for, which is difficult yeah. if you've never been. It's true. It can be kind of hard to you know 
It's, to to it, fully comprehend. Yeah. And, then, and, and as somebody who has been, you start telling the stories. Well, the thing and, is that everybody, uh, the other thing is that everybody thinks they know what Burning Man is. Mm. Everybody who hasn't been is like, but but mm. usually what they think they know is that it's a bunch of hippies dancing around a fire in a circle with drums and doing drugs. Drugs. Drugs is I would say and the nudity number one. and and everybody's nudity, naked yes. and doing drugs. I yeah I didn't, wasn't quite up to speed on the whole nudity. Oh, thing. you didn't realize that going that, out there. Well, no, I knew before like when because you know the whole story of how I went to Burning Man was I had a coworker. Who was like, hey, do you want a ticket? And I was like, sure. And that's that's a big deal because that's a 300 and some yeah. odd dollar. I mean, that's a 350 like, to $400 yeah, ticket. I, I was like, um, okay, well, how, you know. Anyways, we had the whole conversation of like, do I need to pay you? And she was like, absolutely not. Oh, wow, that's cool. And uh, so anyway, so I um, I, I, I went. Mm-hmm. but and, and leading up to going, I did a lot of, you know, research and looked into it a little bit more. And I, Which you have again, to. The, the whole nudity thing, I, I that it didn't surprise me, right? But it 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 wasn't sort of on my list of things. And it's not like everybody's Drugs naked out there. Was the I thought everybody was just like constantly high, constantly, yeah, tripping balls, absolutely. Oh, and you know plenty, there are those. Plenty of people are yeah doing drugs out there. Uh, but not everybody. Certainly not everybody. But by no stretch of the imagination. In right. Fact. And not everybody's naked. There's a few people that there's there's a lot of people that like, you know, some level of nudity. Shirt cockers. There are the shirt cockers. <laughs> Which and I had always also, called Donald Ducking. Yeah, you can you can Donald Duck it. You can shirt cock it. Yeah. It's, but, which I which I, is I feel a term that's self explanatory enough that we don't need to go too deep into it. I did baffling. See, I did see a shirt. Well, actually, I, not baffling. I saw a shirt vadger for the first time this year. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, oh, okay, all um, right. But well, what? It, you have it. But I'll tell you what my Burning Man is. Burning Man for me is actually more of an art festival than mm. anything. Okay. There's a ton of really cool art that's built out there, uh-huh. uh, and most of it is built just to be burned by the end. Yeah, it's amazing. Like yeah. there's all these huge art pieces that people are putting countless hours of work into Mm -hmm. and then they just burn it to the ground yeah so none of you get to see it rude suckers but i wanted to talk about a few things uh that i saw there because this year was surprisingly religious what or rather had a surprising amount of 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 religious references in the art. okay wait wait, you know in the art in the art because the the thing about burning man that it was a thing that really didn't settle terribly well with me mm. was the sort of fabricated fake um pseudo ritualistic pseudo spiritual rituals i guess mm. is probably a better way of, of you know what i mean you know the like things, what kinds right? of things um you know like the the well, the the temple, mm. right? Which is an actual um, Burning Man edifice. A lot of people read a lot into it as mm-hmm. to like what it is, right? right? And right. What, it's, what it? I mean, because it's it's whatever you want it to be. Sure. Type thing. But m- most people who there are really putting some spiritual weight <laughs> into it, right? And you know, there's the the order of the whatever the guys in the robes and the hoods the, the, that go and do the lanterns, lamp lighters, and it's and... like this. You know, you watch them doing this thing, and it's almost like a monk like mm-hmm. procession. They're they're quiet. They're they should still. they should they be chanting, thing. shouldn't they? Yeah, yeah, but it's like there's all these weird yeah, things so that that are like an honor to be a part of, right? Be a yeah, part yeah. of this ritual thing of it, and people will talk about their spiritual experiences. And right. blah, 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 blah. You and I have very low tolerance for spiritual things. Yeah, and, well, it's and just bullshit. Very low need for for. Yeah. Ritual. Yeah. A lot of people still need, still really enjoy ritual. No, and I get that. Even if they're not religious. It, or yes, but this was, when was the first year of Burning Man? 20 something years ago. Right. Or something. Like, this is fabricated. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Clearly. And I got to say, like, I go out there and there is that element. There's this, like, so every year they build a temple. Yeah. What they call a temple. Yeah. And it's not certain, it's certainly not like any religion. 
that they do, but a lot of people go out there and they sort of they meditate or mm-hmm. they have whatever sort of, you know, they a lot of people post pictures or posters about about a loved one that has died there and stuff. Yeah. So they go out there to sort of explore those Not feelings. Not died there. Not died there, sorry. Right. They've posted something there about someone who has died. Yes. Um, sorry, how to catch that. As a matter of fact... Because that would be a lot of dead people. Yeah, it would. Man. It would be. No, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, one of my campmates put some of his mother's ashes there. Really? Year, at the temple, yeah. Interesting. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So there you go. Um, oh, and another one of my campmates put her cat's ashes there. Better? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, whatever. It's a place for that. that. All of that's appropriate in this place. But I tell you, I have such a low tolerance for people who are like humming. They sit and they do whatever and they're swaying and they're, you know, they, somebody inevitably brings out the didgeridoo. And just, <laughs> just have, so there's a low drone happening somewhere. <laughs> off. Why the didgeridoo? Like, I don't know. At one year, was a, a guy play, tried to play it like directly at my chest. And I was like, no, thanks. I don't need to be didgeridone. <laughs> didgeridone't, sir. Can you undidgeridoo that? Because <laughs> no. And people like do the sage smudging thing. Oh, yeah. Which I cannot stand that smell oh, of really? burning stage. I uh, hate so it. I like the smell. Andrea hates I, it too. We both, hate, it makes us I, both I sick. I hate the whole like, they're all being... Uh, you know right ritually yeah about it yeah the, yeah they're being ritually and they're like cleansing the that's what it like, is yeah fuck the you, cleansing you know, shit you're cleansing it with smoke <laughs> you're making something clean with smoke Not clearly dan anyway. clearly anyway just for those of you out there who are into smudging, just know that not all of us appreciate that smell, and maybe it's yeah. not something that you do when you don't know everyone around you. So Anyway, uh, but what I wanted to talk about was that there were crosses on the playa this year. What? There were no fewer than three, oh, no, four things that could be considered a church or a chapel. Uh, okay, as chapel, as I don't pieces. have a huge problem, but church... Oh, feels different. Here's what's interesting. As far as a word, you know what I mean? mm -hmm. A chapel can be a nice place of reflection. Well, no, these are art churches. I don't get that. What do you mean? So imagine I'll describe a couple of them. One of them was just like a little like little house on the prairie, little church house. Cute. Yeah, it was cute. I didn't go into it. I don't know if there was like some like monster in there or something. (laughs) You never know. (laughs) Literally, Burning Man, you just have no idea. If you go into a thing, it's going to be different on the outside. I don't know. Anyway, so I didn't, I didn't, I just drove, past, rode past that one. Mm. But there was one that was really cool, quite an elaborate, a full building. Mm. You go in, and the entire exterior is glowing, is lit from within. And it's because you see it, you do most of your stuff at night. I, I did go during the day too. But photographs all around, art photographs all around the exterior, really interesting stuff. Okay. All around the exterior. Fairly macabre, though. Fairly dark uh, okay. in subject matter. Um, all black and white. Uh, or rather, sort of a sepia tone sort of thing. Mm. But but the church itself, quite a, quite a well-done um, structure. Looked really authentic. Looked really sort of um, uh, like cathedrally, only, only smaller scale. And you could go inside, and there was a little... A little confession booth, which I'm told I didn't actually look closely enough to see this for myself. I'm told had a glory hole. Okay. <laughs> which I think is cute. And okay. Then, and then, like, all this iconography within the, you know, right at the altar, there's a, a, a Abraham Lincoln head for whatever reason. Anyway. So not reverent. No, not at all. Okay. No, no. A very, Better. like I say, a very macabre sort of thing. It okay. was very, it was a very sort of artistic deal. Okay. Uh, that one was interesting. My favorite, by a long shot, is an art piece called The Church Trap. Okay. It was, it was so imagine a little wooden church, um, decent size, you know, maybe, uh, maybe seven or eight rows of pews, a stage, an organ, but okay. the whole, but take the whole exterior of the church and tip it. So that the back, so that it, imagine a box. Imagine this church is now a box. You tip it up 
You know, you remember those traps yeah. that you used to see where there's where you put a stick uh, under yeah, on a yeah. box and then you, you there's like a well, you have a, a string a string on the, and then on you the, on the stick you pull the stick and the box drops. Right. Yeah. It's right. a church trap. Oh, so the funny. whole church is tilted up, but the uh, pews are still there and everything. Oh. And it's actually quite gorgeous. They had the they actually had a working organ. Really? So people would walk up and play the organ, and they actually had a microphone. So we were standing there at one you point, sermonize, and a guy came, went up, and did a whole like revival type sermon. It was oh, amazing. Wow, He's, brothers and sisters, he gets all excited. Wow, okay, really fun stuff. And 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 the organ has this artistic uh, sheet music sort of flowing up from it, and like spilling out of the windows and stuff. Really fun. Okay. You guys should look that look a picture of this up. Okay. But I just thought that, and then it's a trap. Right. Because it's a trap. Right. Look out. <laughs> okay, so was that, there were crosses out there. Like, it was just so interesting. So, okay, but I mean, but these cross, are artists like, exploring right. religion. I thought that was so cool. But, I mean, a, a cross by itself, which is, is that what you mean by crosses out there? Were yeah. they just like random crosses? Um, he, or, or, or were well, they in some sort of context? Because when you said that you were going to be talking about like this churchy stuff out on the playa, I was like, I kind of assumed that it wasn't as in jest because you were like talking about churches oh, and crosses and whatnot. And it was no. surprising to you how much church stuff there was i'm just saying i was just saying how many artists felt the need to explore okay so yeah. mainstream religion See, i was in concerned their art. i was like oh. wow boy there was an element that showed up this year yeah no not, you know. not that at all here there's the church trap oh, that's, that's wonderful it's a cute that's little amazing thing. Yeah. yeah okay um so I, so they're, I don't they're, know. They're, they're, they were just exploring i mean i mean that right there is 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 quite you know, critical. Right. Of I mean, because that is undeniably a, a little country chapel of right. some kind. Yeah. You know what I mean? When you look at that. Exactly. You know. So, I, I, you know, I, I guess I don't, I, I didn't have anything that was, um, it, I was just surprised, like, I was surprised to see that much iconography and then not see, and, and not see, uh, I don't know. It was, I, well, now that you say that, you made me feel stupid. No, it's mm-hmm. just d- different than what I thought. Oh, okay. Sorry for yawning, people. Yeah, everybody. It's, you, it's, it's after nine o'clock. I'm. It's, it's Frank's bedtime, apparently. <sighs> well, I've had long days, Dan. Here's here's the other here's the other one. Oh, really cool, huh? Yeah, that's quite impressive. Yeah, you guys should look these up. Type like church you burning just man. Put them on the Facebook page or something. Oh, I should. I should link to them so that people can. They know where to go. To <laughs> okay, I'll get some links up on the uh, on the old Facebook. That sounds like a good idea. Um, but yeah, there's a there's um, it's just it's it's an interesting place. But I think I think art. I was just gonna say I think art is a a good place for for us to to be exploring for we as a community to be exploring our our sort of because so many atheists have ha, participate in that in the communal. Uh, so much of our community has had the experience of having been in a church, having been in a religion, involved in one, yeah. right? Yeah. And and uh, you know, it's a it's a good way to it's a good way to sort of process that. Yeah, it's it's, it's all very very interesting. Anyway, right. Burning Man. Yeah, I'm just reporting back. Well, good. That's fun. the Burning Man report for, with Dan. Yeah, unless you have any other questions. I don't have any it was, questions. It was hot. Yeah, well, that's Burning Man. <clears throat> and desert. You have to yeah. expect that. Hot and dusty. Yeah, dusty is always, that's going our, to happen. Our RV is named Dusty Rose. Oh, that's cute. Because it goes to Burning Man and because all of the interior is rose colored. Is, is in that dusty rose. Oh, of. that's, yeah, that's true. It's that color oh, that was so popular cute. in the 80s. Yeah. <laughs> both both Andrea and our friend Stacy said that they had that carpet in their in their rooms in the 80s. Oh, yeah. Are Dusty rose colored car. Yeah. Ew. They're like, oh, I had that carpet. So then, there you go. <laughs> the same color that's in the RV. <laughs> uh-huh. Oh, that's funny. And then we and then we proceeded to make it dustier rose. I'm sure it's mainly dusty now. It's mostly just dusty. Yeah. yeah. Although we cleaned it up pretty good. Oh, well, there you go. 
know. All right, everybody. Well, uh, you know, if you want to get in touch with us <clears throat> and ask further questions about the Burning Man experience, mm. which I'm now having gone three times, oh, a total expert on. Yeah. Uh, okay. You, you can write to us at podcast at thankgodimatheist.com. You could leave us a voicemail at 424-666-8442. Or you can jump onto the Facebooks to see some of those photos I've been promising. Uh, that's facebook.com slash TGI Atheist. And of course, we like to thank the Red Rock Hot Club for being so generous with their music. And uh, that's it. All right. That's well, a whole show. Woo. Wrapped up <laughs> in a tidy little bow. Well, thanks for listening. Love you guys. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.